It's raining. This weather won't get right. Hey, nieces and nephews. Uncle Jay here. So my purpose is to come before you and to encourage you. And I want us to walk in that dominion, in that power. Hey, nieces and nephews. Uncle Jay here. Jay, you all like that store? Where you find the best in Christian motivation apparel? I'd like to welcome you to my channel where we help you to walk in victory, power, and live your life on purpose. I'd like to welcome you all to another episode word of the day coffee with uncle jay make sure you go get that coffee come in have a seat you might be here for a while i might break this up in two different videos first of all i like to say we're having a mother's day sale on our site go to the site there's a 20 percent discount on everything go ahead and purchase something for your mother there i'd like to thank all those who have been supporting the channel and you know buying the merch Buying the products that are offered. I appreciate you, all the gifts, those who have sent gifts. I appreciate it. You know, you keep the lights on, so to speak. I pray that God bless you a hundredfold. And all those who have given to me, I pray that God will bless you a hundredfold. The word of the day is authority. Authority. Look at the definition of authority. It is the right, the power to enforce laws, regulation, rules, to enforce obedience, authority. You woke up late for work. You're rushing to get to work. You get in your car, you're rushing. You might have even had an argument with your loved one and you're rushing to work. You didn't take notice that you ran the red light, but you also didn't see the cop that was sitting there. The cops pulls you over. He gives you a ticket, you're angry, and you say to the cop, you don't have a right to pull me over. Why you pull me over? But the cop has the authority to pull you over. Anyone who has that uniform on has the right to pull you over because you broke the law. You created an infraction, a transgression. So they have the right to pull you over. Even though you have the right to drive your car anywhere, any way you want to also. You don't have to obey the speed limit or anything. But if you break the traffic rules, that cop has a right to pull you over. And the same thing applies spiritually. As children of God, we have been given certain authorities, certain rights, certain power. John 1 and 12 says, as many as received them to them, he gave power. He gave the right. He gave the authority to be called the sons and daughters of God. We know that means that you, are, you have the right to become a child of God when you accept Christ into your life. But being a child of God, you also have authority. When Jesus died on the cross and he resurrected on the third day, he said, all power, all authority was given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he turned to his disciples. He says, I have given you authority. When Jesus sent out the 70, when they returned, they came back and they said, Lord, the demons was subjected to us in your name. We had authority in your name to cast out demons. But Jesus responded to them. He said, don't rejoice because the devils are subjected to you, but rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. He also said, I have given you authority, power, the right over serpents, over scorpions, over every other thing that you may trample on them and that no harm will come upon you. So Jesus Christ has given us authority over evil. So you have to learn how to walk in your authority. The way you walk in your authority is recognizing who you are in Christ. You are a child of God. The Bible says, we have not received the spirit again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out of our Father. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children, we are heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together. Was in Christ is in us when we receive Christ into our life. The same authority that Christ used to cast out demons, to heal the sick. You also have that authority inside of you. You have to recognize that God has given you authority over the situations in your life. You go back to the beginning. The Bible says that God created man and he gave him dominion over everything on the earth over every creeping thing 
over the birds, everything, to subdue it. God gave him authority. He gave him the power over everything over the earth. When man sinned, he transferred, he forfeited that authority and gave it to the enemy. Jesus came and he died. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, restoring the world unto himself. So when you accept Christ, you gain your authority back over the enemy. The Bible says God created the animals and he brought them to Adam. The Bible says whatever Adam named those animals, that was their name. God didn't overstep the authority he gave Adam. He didn't intervene. Whatever Adam named those animals, that was their name. You also have the authority, whatever you speak in your life, whatever you, you call those animals in your life, those situations in your life, that will be their name. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. He who loves it will eat the fruit thereof. So if you say you're not going to make it or you're not healed or you're not delivered, then you won't be delivered. We talk about walking in authority today. You have to recognize who you are in Christ. You are heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. All those things that were in Christ are in you when you receive Christ. Now you are a child of God. You are royalty. You are part of a priesthood. So you have to walk in that authority. Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain to be removed and be cast into the sea. He said the mountain will move. So Adam and Eve gave up their authority in the garden to the devil. And the devil confirmed this when Jesus was in the wilderness. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible said he hungered and said that the devil came to tempt him. The devil brought Jesus on top of a mountain. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world in one instance. And he said, all of these kingdoms were given unto me. And I have authority to give it to whomever I will. He confirmed that he was given that authority. Adam and Eve gave him the authority of the, over the earth. That's why he's called the prince of the air or the God of this world. Because Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, they forfeited their right to the devil to become the ruler of this world. But when you are in Christ, you have dominion over the enemy. He can't violate like God didn't overstep or intervene in the authority of Adam when he named the animals. The devil can't intervene in your life without you forfeiting your authority. You have to give up that right. When Jesus was getting ready to be crucified and he was standing before Pilate, Pilate was asking him questions. And he wouldn't answer Pilate. Pilate said, do you know I have authority to crucify you or to free you? Jesus said, you would not have that authority if it wasn't given unto you from above, from heaven. Jesus often said that no one takes my life. I lay it down. I have the power, the authority, the right to lay it down. And I have the power to take it up. Like Pilate had the right to crucify or free Jesus. The enemy can't do nothing in your life unless you forfeit that authority. You lay down that authority. You give up that authority. You come into agreement with that he could come into your life and do things in your life. The devil, God won't violate your will. We have free will. You can choose the things you want in your life. Think about one example when Ahab wanted to buy the field of Naboth. He wanted to put a garden there. Because Naboth inherited that land, he refused the king. He didn't want to sell it to the king. The king couldn't violate or just do whatever he wanted with the land because it was neighbor's land. So the devil can't do anything he want to you without you giving over that right. Like if neighbor gave over that right to that land to King Ahab. The only way King Ahab got that land, Jezebel lied and said he sent. And the leaders of Israel came and he killed neighbor and Ahab took the land. So that's how you can forfeit your authority, your right is through sin or open doors or coming into agreement when the devil comes with fear and you accept that fear you open the door now those things become prevalent in your life even dreams all those things you can have a bad dream i give you an example i don't talk about my dreams that much because i don't want people to think of me more highly than i ought to 
I've been dreaming all my life. I interpret dreams and everything, but I barely get on here and talk about my dreams because I want you to see Jesus. I'm nothing. And God interprets dreams. But I had a dream. This man, he looked like an old Indian warrior or something, but he was a big man. He was tall. I appeared as a kid and he snatched me up and he brought me somewhere and he said he was going to violate me. And I said, no, you're not. You're not going to do anything. What I wanted to show you is that you have authority. Now, if I would have came into agreement with what he said, he would have violated my life. He would have came into my life and he would have had the right to destroy things in my life. But because I said, no, you're not, you're not going to do anything. He couldn't do whatever he wanted to do because I have authority. Whatever I named those animals, whatever I named those situations of my life, that was their name. That is their name. So you have to learn how to walk in your authority. And then the Bible also says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself no reputation by becoming a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And because he appeared in the likeness of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus humbled himself. He emptied himself. He gave up his authority. He didn't consider it robbery to be equal to God, but he humbled himself even to death. If Jesus Christ didn't give up his authority, didn't lay down his life to die, no one couldn't kill him. He said, I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it up. When Jesus was on the cross, before he took last breath, he prayed to, to the Father. He said, to you, I commit my spirit and it is finished. And the Bible says he hung his head and he died. He gave up the spirit. No one took his life. He gave it up. The enemy can't do anything to you unless you give up that right. You have the right as the 70 did to speak the name of Jesus. Everything in heaven and earth and things on the earth, it has to bow to the name of Jesus. It has to be submitted to the name of Jesus. You can tear down every stronghold every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You can bring in an obedience to the word of God when you speak the word of God in your life. When you call those animals, those things, those situations in your life, when you name them what God calls them. I am healed. I am delivered. I'm set free. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved me. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every word that rises in judgment, I condemn it. Speak the word of God to your situation. Speak the word of God. Walk in your authority. The Bible says we have that same spirit of faith according to what is written. They believed and spoke. We also believe and speak. The Bible says the word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So walk in your authority. Believe God as it was told unto you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's all according to your faith. If we believe in him, if we trust in him, he will not put us to shame. So walk in your authority. The word of the day is authority. Don't give up your authority. Don't give up your right as a child of God. The devil can do nothing to you. Can what God is. The authority that God has given you. He said he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You are not out of your mind. You are not naked as Adam and Eve thought they were naked in the garden. No, you are clothed and in your right mind. You have put on Christ. You are not naked. Just walk in the authority of Jesus Christ today. No matter what you're going through, just give it to Jesus and he will see you through. He said, I have given you authority. You have the authority. You have the right. Like the cops enforcing the law, you can enforce the law. If we look at 
the systems of the world, the spiritual, physical, all these things are, are governed by systems, by laws, by regulations. The Bible says we are to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He also told us, he said, whatever we bind on earth, he will bind, it's bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. So we have the right, we have the authority to loose the things and, and bind things here on earth. So what authority are you going to walk in today? Speak life in your situation. You are no longer barren, but you are fruitful and you multiply. Everything you put your hands to do, it will prosper. You are like a tree, you're planted by the rivers of water. Pray that the Lord will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake, that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, that your vine will not fail to bear fruit for you. Speak life into your situation. What do you call those situations? What do you name those animals in your life? The Bible says, Adam named every creeping thing and the birds of the air. So no matter where you are, height, depth, angels or principalities, wherever you are, you have the right, you have the authority to name, call those situations which you will have them be. Especially if you speak the word of God to the situation. You have the authority in the word of God. The Bible says that we have this confidence that whatever we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have received the petition that we ask of him. So if you ask according to the will, his will, according to the promises, according to the word of God, he will hear you. God will not intervene on your authority. But we like to pray, Lord, take the situation away. The most situations we have brought on ourselves, we open those doors. We have spoken those things into our lives. Yet God may allow the devil to come into your life to test you, but you have the authority. So you have the authority. You have the right as a child of God. So the word of the day is authority. I pray you walk in the authority that Christ has given you. Just continue to pray for me. I may decrease, that he may increase, that he'll be lifted up in my life and draw all men unto him. And always remember, head always up. Wait a minute, wait. Did you hit that like button? My mother said when you go in people's house, you're supposed to say hello. Make sure you hit that like button. And go check out my podcast on all platforms. Coffee with Uncle J. Download my free ebook, The Path. And make sure you go check out at Christian Motivation Apparel at jeonline.store jeonline.store use the code TAKE10 and you get 10% discount on anything you purchase there always remember that always up jeonline.store where you find the best in Christian Motivation Apparel